and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, for those of you who venture. out on this cold morning and those of you who are joining us online uh, you might be a little jealous of your warmth and if you're smart your hot drink you're drinking but uh, that's okay it's a uh, it's a chilly day outside but at least we're not in Buffalo New York right <laughs> always something good about the situation a few announcements as we prepare for worship this morning uh, first of all, our second mile monthly giving emphasis for this month is Pine Creek Camp. Our goal is $500 for a total of 1000 for the year. Um, this uh, evening, we uh, are the proud hosts of the Fellowship of Churches Community Thanksgiving service. It uh, begins at 6 o'clock, uh, so uh, hope to see you here. There's also a a reception afterwards and I know some of you have been bringing in cookies and things this morning we appreciate that um, there's a bolted insert got information about that also uh, uh, not this week this coming week but the first week it's into the first of December uh, we need help from a couple of people to pick up our poinsettias from White's residential on the south side of Wabash hard to find musicians these days because everybody's busy so uh, they moved some things at the university so we said all right we'll move to Saturday so um, that's uh, in a couple of Saturdays so uh, hope you're here I know that the uh, choir's been uh, working diligently on that any other announcements this morning Seeing none, let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for you have looked favorably upon your people. You have raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of your servant David. By the tender mercy of God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. Give light to those who sit in darkness and guide our feet into the way of our opening hymn is Beneath the Cross of Jesus. The words will be on the screen and in your hymnals on page 297.
please join with me in the opening prayer. Faithful God, expand our thankful imaginations to time beyond our time, to wisdom beyond our wisdom, to strength beyond our strength. You are the ones who have scattered my flock and driven them away. You haven't attended to their needs, so I will take revenge on you for the terrible things you have done to them, declares the Lord. <clears throat> I myself will gather the few remaining sheep from all the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their pasture, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will place over them shepherds who care for them. Then they will no longer be afraid or dread harm, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from David's line, and he will rule as a wise king. He will do what is just and right in the land. During his last lifetime, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety, and his name will be the Lord of our righteousness. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, 
for they don't know what they are doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is really the Christ sent from God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the... Formal charge against him. It read, This is the King of the Jews.
past several weeks, we've been taking a little lighthearted approach to the not an easy word to hear or overhear in this case. It's not easy because, well, knowledge is important to us. We don't like to be told we don't know what we're doing. Know thyself, said one of humanity's greatest philosophers. Look at our lives. We strive for knowledge. We live in an information age. We grow to the age of understanding. We confer degrees upon one another. We pride ourselves on our intelligence quotient. Yet when push comes to shove, when life bumps up against death, when meaning stands before us, when salvation is offered to us, when love reaches out to embrace us, we need to be forgiven because we don't know what we're doing. The story of the prodigal son, Jesus tells us that the wanton behavior of, of the prodigal, the loose living, the, the slap against parental authority, the self-centered, self-seeking sinfulness is not really who we are. That was the function of Jesus' words from the cross. To stitch us back into relationship with God.
even though our actions seem to say that we don't want to be there, even though our words imply that we want nothing to do with God or with salvation or with hope for living. The thing is, we don't know what we're doing. Now, it's hard to argue for the historical accuracy of these words from the cross because there's only one source. In terms of historical argument, arguments, that doesn't work. But what I can argue for is the theological... saving your skin and, and ours too this moment of desperation he like so many of us defaults to self preservation pretty typical we might say expected human nature but the other one had a different word from his cross many commentators write that this just might be the first Christian sermon not the words from Jesus, but the confession of the criminal. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die, he says to the other criminal. We are rightly condemned for we're receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did, but this... man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Not very long, as sermons go, but a sermon nonetheless. The argument is that here is the first one who recognizes that Jesus, this man dying on the cross, was the Messiah because he was dying in innocence. Wonderful vision and certainly one worthy to cling to, and yet it 
it seems like there, there's a lot more here. And we start with that first word, today. I know that given the fact that breath was, that death was mere breaths away, at least for Jesus, the criminal could have been, ref- or Jesus could have been referring to the fact that shortly he and his new friend would be just traipsing through these green fields. Sort of a hang on until we get through this messy part right now, and then we'll find ourselves in the garden. By the way, which is the literal translation of the Greek word here, it's the only time it appears in the Bible, and it is never used for heaven. Even so, I think we're missing something if that's still the only interpretation we glean. I think the word today is a bit more immediate. It it carries a sense of now, this very moment, not just sometime in a 24-hour span. But how can that be? How can Jesus be inviting this criminal... offers us is relationship. Follow me. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Where two or three are gathered, I will be there. Serious pregnancy issues and uh, at risk of losing.
baby. She's about at 20 weeks now. She's hospitalized and confined to bed. And um, Joe Hayes, Greg Bowman's spouse, was injured in a car accident Friday head-on with a FedEx delivery truck. Cuts, bruises, neck strain, three fractured vertebrae, but he is at home and painfully healing. So uh, keep them in your prayers. And then uh, uh, Keith Beer, a uh, friend of uh, Jen. The one dying on a cross. Tremendously, um, because um, voice is very crucial at the at the school and in our community. Um, as you know, Elizabeth and I and many other musicians have tried to impact um, as many people as we can, and for that to be ripped away from us is very disheartening.
bigger or just, yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> well, I hadn't heard that. That is just unbelievable. Carson, help him fight. Be with his medical team. Be with his parents. Fortunately, his parents work at home, so they are both. They have both been able to be with him over like the last six weeks, when things have gone from one thing to another. And I am thankful for everyone in this church. And do ask for
your prayers. Thank you. Honecker. Carson, what was his last name? Honecker. With a K or C?
the others. This week we're praying for Laketon Wesleyan Church, Pastor David Cox. Oh, don't move me yet. Uh, so uh, uh, it was a combination of sizes of churches, um, almost.
groups, exactly half were uh, churches that average less than 50 at worship and have part-time pastors. 35 were about our size, and 20 were large churches. So uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what's going on in the denomination. Within our district, these are the seven churches that chose to leave. difficulty he's having in, um, in, in dealing with, with all of this. It's probably not what he signed up for.
Jesus for who he was. And in that, knew that only in Jesus was true life. Free us, Lord, from our sin. We know it it creates division between us and you. Help us to understand that your love is beyond our understanding. And yet we need to respond. With your love, in your love, and by your love. So that the world around us may know the love of God and Jesus Christ. And as those who call ourselves his disciples. Hear us as we lift our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our ancestor Israel, forever and always.
To you, Lord, belongs greatness and power, honor, splendor, and majesty, because everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. Yours, Lord, is the kingship, and you are honored as head of all. Let us consider these words as we give of our tithes and our offerings. in all that we are and all that we have, we are yours. Grant that our gifts may go to the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Please continue standing as we sing our hymn of invitation, Crown Him with Many Crowns. The words will be on the screen and in your hymnal on page 327.
king. Prepare a path for the Lord. Endure everything with patience and teach people of salvation through the forgiveness of sins. And may God gather you into safety. May Christ Jesus strengthen you with glory.